Hello, welcome to Latte Firm for a quick reaction video on Arsenal's draw tonight at home to Bayern Munich in the first leg of the Champions League quarterfinal. It's just approaching 1.45 a.m. Um, it's now Wednesday. I've just finished the post-match phone-in on Twitter, so if you want to tune into that, check it out on audio platforms like Apple and uh, Spotify from tomorrow morning. And there's been a lot to talk about. A really enthralling game of football. Two big teams going head to head. Um, spoils shared, of course, in the end. But could have been a penalty for Bayern. Could and should have been a penalty for Arsenal. Potentially, maybe a red card for Harry Kane. Lots to talk about. If you're tuning in for the first time, please do subscribe to Latte Firm. Lots of content like this to come throughout the rest of the season. Games are coming thick and fast. And uh, get involved in the chat. Um, you know, let me know what you think of my comments. Let's bring up the team news as we normally do. So courtesy of Arsenal.com, you can see the headline there, Gunners denied by Bayern Munich. The team news, um, I expected one or two changes and that's what we got. So David Rye kept his place in goal. Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, Kivior coming in at left back. Didn't expect that. I thought maybe Tommy Asu would play. He was fit enough to be on the bench. I maybe thought he'd play, but of course Arteta had different ideas. Uh, Rice, Jorginho kept in the team after a good performance away at Brighton with Erdegaard. Saka, Havertz and Martinelli brought back into the team after missing out uh, at the start of the weekend. Bench looking good. Ramsdale, Hine, two goalkeepers. Tommy Asu, Sinchenko, Partiel, Nelly, Smith-Rowe, Vieira Nelson, Trossard, Jesus and Inketia. And of course, the game ended 2-2. And remember, it's just halfway. You know, Arsenal flew out the blocks I feel like the team were really excited. It was a great atmosphere. No Bayern Munich fans in the stadium. Um, really fantastic display of scarves and red. Everybody was wearing red, hence my top tonight. And I think the youthful exuberance of our team showed tonight. I think they were just a little bit carried away by the occasion. You know, it's the first time mo most of these boys are playing in this sort of occasion, this sort of fixture. Against Bayern Munich, who have had a really tough team domestically, tough time domestically, sorry, but they are still a good team with lots of European pedigree, and it was always going to be a tough game. So we made some mistakes, you know, we we caused our own trouble. We'll talk about the goals in just a second, but we have ended the game two two, and of course we are now just at half time with the next leg coming up away in Germany. The first goal came, and what a goal it was from Bukayo Saka. Um, 11, 12 minutes on the clock, electric start. I think we had the ball out on the right-hand side. We lost it and Kai Havertz won it back really quickly, laid it on to Ben White, who played Saka through and Saka through the finest of gaps, just curled it into that bottom corner. Um, it's becoming a trademark finish, that that sort of, you know, curled in shot into the goal. Um, Manuel Neuer having no chance, Eric Dyer sort of standing off. And what a great start, a great roar, Saka wheeling away in celebration. Fantastic. And at 1-0 up, you're thinking, great, this is the perfect start. Let's just keep it calm, try and build on that. But it took just a few minutes for former gunner, Serge Gnabry, to equalise. Um, this time, Bayern Munich, they sort of broke based on a defensive howler, really. David Raya came out trying to claim the ball, passed it away sideways. I think it was to Kivior, who passed it into trouble. Bayern Munich picked up possession. They worked it quite neatly through with a couple of passes through the lines and Gnabry was in the box and he finished it quite well. Raya getting a touch to it through the inside leg. And then Gnabry wheeling off to the Arsenal fan, celebrating with his sort of trademark celebration. It looked like he was mocking us for not giving him a contract, but I think that's his trademark celebration. And of course, he's been at the club, or he was at the club from the age of 16, so I'm not going to knock it too much. 1-1, um, one, one, you think, OK, let's settle down, hold on nerve and just keep building again slowly. And I think it was just maybe 10 minutes after that, they got their second, this time Leroy Sane, picking up the ball from quite deep, quite wide, and running, slaloming through the Arsenal defence. No one could get close to him. He's rapid. We know he's dangerous. Arteta would have known about him, given he coached him at Manchester City. Some would say that Arteta brought the best out of Leroy Sane at Manchester City. But Sane slalomed through the defence, and it was just unfortunate. You know, made contact with William Saliba. When you're running at that sort of pace, and that sort of directness towards goal and you're you know you're trying to be stopped by defenders there's every chance that you make contact and it just kind of throws an attacking player off his balance and that's what's happened and he's gone down and the ref was very very quick to give the pen unfortunately 
it was Harry Kane who stepped up from the penalty spot. Um, and he scored, made it look really easy, just sort of slowly rolling the ball into the bottom left-hand corner of the net, uh, the left-hand side of David Raya as he as he dived to his right. And then all of a sudden we're 2-1 down and it's just half an hour on the clock and you're thinking, crikey, what sort of game is this going to be? And the score was filtering through from Madrid. I think it was 2-2 at the time. Goals galore. And I think there's one thing that you kind of need to learn about this level of football you know, you can get away with it maybe most weeks in the Premier League, but like when you're at the top table of European football, you give teams a sniff and they will take that chance to kill you. Um, it's a harsh lesson, but it's a lesson that needs to be learned, a lesson that needs to be embraced by the boys. You can't make mistakes at this this level of football. You can't make mistakes against teams where you've got Gnabry and Sane and, and Harry Kane and Musiala, all fantastic attacking players. You're going to get killed. So 2-1 down, half time. we come out second half, we're trying to get that equaliser, and Mikel was forced into some changes. I think Sinchenko came on to replace Kivior, who, let's be honest, hasn't done too badly. I think Jakub Kivior, people forget, he's been playing for four to six weeks now, out of position in left-back, very reliable, very sort of 7, 8 out of 10, just goes about his business. Today I thought was maybe a bit too big for him. You know, that's probably his biggest game that he's played in his career, and Bayern Munich are a fantastic transition team they're so quick on the break I think he struggled a little bit uh, and when Zinchenko came on I wasn't I can't have to be honest I wasn't overly optimistic that things were going to change too much defensively but I think Zinchenko brought a bit of balance to our team to our attacking team you know he tried to do that sort of tucking into midfield and it did give us a bit of an overload and it was it was good um I still question Zinchenko defensively um, Tommy Asu would be my my favourite, but it's clear Tommy Asu is not fit to start yet. The goal did come, and it came through super sub. The baby-faced assassin, Leo Trossard, off the bench again. The guy is coming up clutch week after week, game after game. Important moments, assists, goals. And what a goal this was. You know, we had the ball. It fell into Gabby Jesus, who'd come on as a substitute himself. Um, close ball control, tees it off to Leo Trossard, who just you know side foots it into the bottom bottom of the net in front of the north bank which was euphoric wheels away in great celebration really passionate you know fists clenched running back to the halfway line there was a real sort of eagerness about our game and i just wonder if again it goes back to like it being such a grand occasion everyone knows the stakes are so high and it's bayern munich and we get to play the winners of man city and real madrid if we progress into the semis and I just wonder if maybe all of that, the occasion, the, the grandness of it, kind of just distracted us from our normal playing style in the Premier League, where we're so in control and so dominant and so patient and so intelligent and smart with the way that we play and efficient in terms of our build-up. I just feel that they were too eager, too excited, played the occasion, and you can't blame them. You know, we've got some really young boys in this team and the coach himself also very young. And of course, as Arsenal fans being back in the Champions League quarterfinal for the first time in many, many years, there was a real excitement about the place and you can't blame them for that. But I think there will be lessons learned from tonight's performance, from the magnitude of the game, the way that we gave them the goals and the way that we came back into the game. And I think we go into the second leg with actually a lot of reason to be encouraged. I think we can go to the Allianz. I think we can take them. And I think we can go there and win. Uh, there were moments of controversy because the game could have ended, you know, different to 2-2. Look, the penalty at the end, you know, I sit in the North Bank and it was as blatant as it <laughs> looks in this image. Bukayo Saka's running through. There is contact with Manuel Neuer. Some people are saying that Saka's put his right leg out, forcing the contact, but there is contact. He's gone down. We see penalties like that given all the time. Harry Kane was a master at that. It wasn't given. And we were absolutely shocked. And what you've got to remember is when you're watching in slow motion, Bukayo Saka is accelerating rapidly towards Manuel Neuer. And when you look at Neuer and the way that he sort of just sticks his leg out, Saka's past him. There is no reason for Saka to go down. All he has to then do is just roll the ball into an empty net between the defender and, and, and the goal. So he's gone down. We're all screaming for a penalty. The Arsenal players and Bukayo Saka, of course, as you can see at the end of the game, livid. But the ref blows the whistle so quickly. And then all of a sudden the camera's on the pitch and you know the, the 
the coaching staff of both teams are on the pitch and then the Champions League music comes through the tannoys and everyone sort of realises it's full time. But I'm amazed that there's not been any sort of VAR um, conversation or, or coverage in, in all of the sort of um, TV content that we've seen. It maybe makes me realise that maybe there wasn't enough time for a VAR check. I remember that one fixture at the Amex Stadium when Manchester United were playing Brighton and the players were called back out for a penalty to be taken after the whistle had been blown. I was kind of hoping that that would happen, but it didn't. So yeah, really, really big moment in that game. You know, we could have been 3-2 up tonight had we've had that penalty right at the death. Harry Kane with a <laughs> ominous looking sort of arm challenge to Gabrielle's throat. Um, if you see the slow motion video, you can see Harry Kane looking to his left, knowing that Gabriel was there. Then he sort of swings his arm to the right. I think it's deliberate. He got a yellow, could have been a red on another day. And then the one that I had no idea that even happened, like no one in the North Bank had realized this, but David Raya puts the ball down for a goal kick. Ref blows his whistle. He passes it across. Gabriel then puts his hand on the ball, but brings it back into the six yard box as if he's about to take the goal kick. And Thomas Tuchel has come out after full time saying that that should have been a penalty. And if David Raya has kicked the ball out as a pass, as a goal kick, and Gabriel has handballed it, then it should be a penalty. Um, so maybe we've got away with one ourselves. But the Bukayo Saka one for me is the real talking point. Listen, all is not lost. Um, we've gifted them two goals today. We scored two good goals today. We've learned a lot about not being so excitable, so eager in a game like this. And I think we just need to go back to our sort of patient approach. There are still 90 minutes to play, a big 90 minutes in Germany. It's going to be a massive game. They are a good team, despite all of their misfortune this year in the Bundesliga. Bayer Leverkusen have been fantastic. You know the Granit Xhaka effect. You know the Xabi Alonso effect. But Bayern Munich, you know, they've, they've notched up a similar number of points to what they had last season. And when it comes to European competition, they have serious pedigree. They've got so much experience within that team. And I think a lot of sort of domestic form goes out the window. You know, you 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 come out under the lights and the Champions League music theme tune sort of just, you know, blast out the tannoy. It's a different game, a different mindset, a different sort of approach. So we take a lot from tonight. And we will go to Germany next week uh, after Aston Villa, of course, at the weekend. And hopefully we'll do enough to get through. Let me know in the chat what you think. Please do like the video. It's a massive help to the channel if we can raise the profile and continue building this fantastic community. Uh, the post-match phone-in will be available on audio uh, as, a, as a podcast, so Apple, Spotify, checking out in the morning. And we'll be back with a late-night latte in the week to look back on tonight's game and also to look ahead to Unai Emery coming back to the Emirates on Sunday. The games are coming thick and fast. Enjoy it. Take care. Bye for now. And Eid Mubarak to those celebrating around the world.